Delighted to welcome Culture Secretary Oliver Dowden to the show right now to talk about a new government-backed scheme worth half a billion pounds to try and help our film and TV productions struggling during the pandemic. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, obviously, we know I mean, we've been talking all morning about the travel industry, aviation, tourism, hospitality massively hit. But of course, as we'll know from all the repeats we're having to see uh, at the moment, that uh, uh, the TV and, produ- and uh, film production industry has been hugely hit as well. What are you proposing to do to help them? Well, I think the TV's term for that is old classics, but um, <laughs> there is a, that's what we're is, calling them these days. Uh, there's a real challenge that uh, even as we are easing the rules so filming can restart. Uh, there is concern amongst producers that they can't get insured for the risk of COVID returning. So what we're saying is, if that happens, of course, we're doing everything we can to stop that happening, to stop a cessation in filming. We'll stand behind you and we'll compensate you through this £500 million compensation scheme. The effect of that is we'll be green lighting £4 billion worth of investment in our film and TV industry, securing 50,000 jobs. And whether that's popular shows like Call the Midwife, which is exported around the world to 237 different territories around the world, or new films like Mothering Sunday or Benediction, which will be able to start production because of this. This is all part of our wider commitment to the creative industries in the UK that make us a global powerhouse for this and sits alongside things like the £1.57 billion uh, arts package uh, that we're also announcing guidelines for today. Well, also, I mean, it is important to remember just what a, a money maker this is in terms of uh, of how big this industry is for us. But um, a lot of people say, well, why are you targeting help for this particular industry? What about more targeted help for hospitality industry, for the tourism industry? Uh, Jonathan Reynolds, the Shadow Work and Pension Secretary, is on the show uh, about an hour ago uh, talking about uh, what, the, what the Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, is going to talk about today, about targeting specific um, help in a furlough scheme extended for those particular industries and giving them financial help. Is that on the cards at all? Well, uh, I know how incredibly valuable the tourism and hospitality sector is. I'm actually responsible for tourism as well within my ministerial portfolio. And that's why we've announced this unprecedented cut in VAT to kickstart uh, tourism and hospitality. So VAT reduced till the end of the year. That's also why, for example, the Chancellor has helped out the hospitality sector with the, the help out to eat out scheme, you know, whereby the Uh, there'll be a reduction in the cost of eating out. All of these measures are designed to to drive forward the the tourism sector. And uh, whilst it is the case that tourism sector is doing very well in the coastal regions, I think um, many of your listeners who've been to places like uh, Devon, Cornwall and so on will know they're they're bustling. There are still major challenges in the the big cities. So we're we're working through those as well. But the VAT cut will be a huge uh, boost to them. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, again, it's a concern for everybody, isn't it? Um, big concern, of course, is about not just domestic tourism, but also the right of people to, the ability of people to go abroad and enjoy some foreign tourism as well, and and people to come to this country from abroad. Uh, we've got that uh, quarantine period in place now, 14 days, people arriving from Spain. The prospect that we could face quarantine imposed in the next few days, people arriving from Belgium, from Luxembourg, from Croatia as well. First of all, how likely is that to happen? And what and whether or not so people could make a judgment whether or not they do choose to fly uh, to those countries on a holiday. Uh, but secondly, also, is there a better way of dealing with this, such as what uh, John Holland Kay from Heathrow Airport has been suggesting, which is uh, to have testing at the airport rather than impose two weeks quarantine? Well, look, I understand everyone's frustration over this. Goodness knows we all want to have a break after the sort of year we've had. And I understand families have been looking forward to getting on holiday to Spain. It's important to understand why we're doing this, because as we get the virus under control here in the UK, we don't want to start re-importing cases from countries where it's rising. So based on the evidence and advice from the Joint Centre for Biosecurity, Uh, we took the decision to impose quarantine on Spain. It's always going to be the case that there'll be somebody in front of you in the queue and someone behind you in the queue uh, when you impose that. We, of course, are looking uh, around uh, the world and keeping it under review. Uh, But I can't really be in a position where I give running commentary on that uh, because as soon as we have the evidence that... um, that there is a risk for another country, we will, of course, impose those quarantine restrictions. In respect of testing, I have heard these comments. It's important to understand that uh, it's not a silver bullet to, to test. So if you tested everyone as they came off planes, it is the case that for some people, 
the virus can uh, be incubating in them and not show up in the test. That's why uh, to be safe, we're imposing the 14-day quarantine. But of course, we're keeping all this under review. And if there's ways of doing this that is less draconian, we will, of course, consider that. Yeah, well, indeed, other countries that have handled the pandemic, some would say with greater success and are acting more quickly in Asia, other countries in Europe have been imposing this testing. And we're not talking about just a one-off test and then we just leave people to it, but people are being tested, say, five days or eight days hence, uh, but then facing a much shorter quarantine period. It can be the difference between someone not being able to pay them their rent or their mortgage that month or indeed uh, being uh, out of a job if they have to take more than a week off. Um, is the government seriously looking at any of this when when this is what a lot of other countries successfully handling the pandemic have been doing for months? Well, of course, if it is safe to do that... Well, we know we it will, is, though, don't we? Because other countries are doing it. Why well, don't we learn the lessons? Well, of course, we're looking at uh, the lessons from other countries, but we have world-leading scientists in the UK, particularly with the Joint Centre for Biosecurity. They're, we're looking at all those options. If we're able to reduce the burden for people, and I know how frustrating it is uh, not being able to go on holiday or being subject to, to quarantine, of course, we will take those measures. But at the moment, we do not feel confident to do it. We are confident that we can do so in a way that is safe. Remember, we're doing all of this to stop us importing cases from elsewhere in the world, uh, which would then put at risk all the hard work and sacrifices we've all made to get it under control here. The last thing we want is to import those cases. We can do it in a safe way, and of course we will. Okay. How much talk is there uh, uh, in government at cabinet meetings with the prime minister about a second wave? Yesterday he said that he, he thought you know Europe could be heading to a second wave, but the prime minister has said repeatedly that we will not have a full second lockdown. So how much talk is there in terms of what preparation is going in to handle that? Well, look, we're all acutely aware of, of the risk because you just have to look around the world and see how the virus is continuing to rise. You only have to look in a country like Spain. This is why we've imposed the lockdown. But in anticipation of that, first of all, the, everyone can play their part to stop that happening, which is to follow the rules, wash your hands, observe social distancing, which is still in place and, and so on. Secondly, uh, we are ramping up uh, testing and tracing. So tens of thousands of people are being taken out of the community because they've uh, either had uh, sim have the virus or have been in contact with someone who has it. That is reducing spread. We're having localised lockdowns and we're also uh, investing in additional capacity in the NHS. And alongside that, of course, we're continuing our drive to get this vaccine uh, for the virus. So we're working on all fronts and are acutely aware of the risk. And what's the government's response to, I know it's not your area of, uh, of responsibility as Culture Secretary, but obviously these matters would have been discussed throughout the pandemic, but the Public Accounts Committee report uh, into social care, accusing the government of being negligent in the decision uh, taken from on high after the evidence they've taken at the committee uh, to basically tell hospitals, please dispatch all of your elderly patients if they're clinically uh, safe to be dispatched, to dispatch them to two care homes out of hospitals, all part of this whole, you know, prepare the NHS for this mass influx of coronavirus patients. That decision was taken despite the fact that there weren't, wasn't testing of um, patients going into care homes, which we think may well have led to thousands of uh, elderly, vulnerable people in care homes dying after it was basically imported uh, from hospitals. Um, what do you make of the criticism? Was the government negligent? Well, I don't accept the characterisation of, of negligence. And in fact, if you if you look at the figures... We were discharging fewer people from hospital into care homes uh, in the, the period from uh, February through to April than we were the same time last year, 40% uh, fewer. And it's also not the case that we were discharging people who were symptomatic of, of COVID. And indeed, uh, the NHS have made it clear there are no circumstances in which clinicians would have discharged people that they uh, believed uh, had on my But people were asymptomatic, and we knew already then that there was a big problem with asymptomatic transmission. Well, yes, of course, there are lessons for, for us to learn, and we've been clear about the need to, to, to learn uh, lessons. But we haven't sort of sat uh, still with this. Um, we introduced the Care Home Action Plan, billions of extra pounds going into care homes. We ensured that uh, everyone in care homes, whether they're residents or staff, were tested routinely whether they have symptoms or not. And in all those ways, combined with all the other measures the government are taking, that has ensured that we've continued to keep this disease 
under control, but why we must continue to remain vigilant. Okay, Oliver Dowden, Culture Secretary, thank you very much indeed for joining us.